This is for uh, Monday, October 12th. First time we're back uh, as both groups. So this is for the groups, but it's also mostly for virtual uh, kids. So I'll go ahead and share the screen and try and wrap up what we talked about today. So it's um, on Monday the uh, 12th. Announcements, let's go over a few of those. I don't wanna to spend too much time on a wrap of one of our announcements, but you guys gotta know as well, right? Uh, first off, I spent the uh, last week in um, Austin and got a chance to um, see these two guys uh, for the uh, OU Texas game. And I'll show this picture because these are alumni of Norman High and of my class. A couple of my favorites, uh, Willis and Jan. Uh, Willis, the guy on my right, he's just he's finishing up his master's in biology. And the guy on my left is Jan. He's finishing up his PhD in economics uh, from University of Texas. Uh, so they, um, the, the point I'm trying to make is that, that, that once we kind of, I get to know you a little better, we end up, um, you know, continuing to um, have friendships. Uh, I mean, my doctor is my ex-student, my dentist is my ex-student, my real estate agent's my ex-student, my lawyer is my ex-student. Um, he just goes on my, my insurance, uh, financial, all these people that kind of run my life now are my ex-students. So um, it doesn't end in May. I mean, it does if you want it to, but here's another one. Uh, um, a couple of my students uh, sent me this uh, this weekend. Uh, they they were talking about how the class is, how they keep to, to use class stuff from physics. And here's something that um, she put together real quick. They were trying to figure out how far they were from their destination. And just to show you that uh, they're still using it um, years later. I wanted to also pointed out that the packet two sheets, which I now have those copied off and I'll hand those out to all the students that are uh, in class, but uh, for virtual, uh, for virtual here, you can, you can print them off if you want, but they're also on my front porch. I have, I kept about 10 sets. It may be too much for you to print off, I understand. There are 10 sets already of, of packets already there. If those all end up going, then uh, I'll put some more out. But uh, I made 80 packets total. I have 81, 82 students. And so I'm thinking that uh, some of you will probably print them off. And I was down on my last penny here on printing. So on copying. Uh, but these are on my front porch. Uh, there's there's 10 sets there if you want to come by now, now if you're in class don't come by because uh these are for that's for virtual students if you're in class i'll just give just give you a packet and then uh there's a first reference sheet is uh they'll end up being about 24 25 of these by the time the year's over uh we had it's taken us forever to get the first one done but then they'll start to come rapidly the more the longer we spend in class the faster these things will come we'll end up with around 25. But here's some of the things, and you'll get this on a test. Uh, when you're taking the test in class, even if you're doing it through Zoom and you're virtual, uh, I'm cool with you having this up, this paper in front of you. I see Pepper is crying down there. I'm gonna have to check on her. Hold on, be right back. I think I can pause this, yeah. <sighs> okay, sorry about that. I don't know what Pepper's upset about. Okay, so um, on this reference sheet, you have the power line. Uh, you have a little bit on the deltas and S, V, theta, that kind of thing. There's your red equations. You have your block equations. And then we have some bridge equations. Now, we haven't talked about this one yet. Uh, we'll get to that one here. We'll probably derive that sometime this week in class, and then I'll put it on the wrap up. Sorry, it's so blurry. It's not so blurry on the PDF. On the Facebook, you can also find it. 
uh, if you want to print it off there. But uh, I'll put it, if I haven't done this by tomorrow, then remind me, I'll put it up on a PDF on the canvas. Then you have some, just some basics on red kinematics, writing equations. Uh, and there's some stuff on vectors and trigonometry, some I roofs and J roofs. Okay, and then a couple of things we haven't talked about yet, some trig identities, which we'll get to. Those will come in handy this year. Okay, but that's all this little trig section. So I wanted to put it all together there. Okay, so there's that announcements. A uh, couple of announcements here. October calendar is the same as it was. I just want to point out some stuff. Like, every, like certainly on Mondays, I'll go over the calendar. And then if there's any big changes, I'll go over the calendar. So here we are on the 12th. Um, there is a Zoom session tonight from 9 to 10. And that is about the take-home test. So I'm going to work. We, we, did, we did a Zoom session up here on the 7th. And that's available on the Facebook group. And I think it's available. There's a link to it on the canvas as well. Uh, and then there's this one tonight and I will videotape that one or I'll take that one, record it. And so if you can't uh, be there, you can watch the recording. It'll probably be available about 11 PM tonight or midnight. Just look on my, if you want to get the first access to any kind of videos I make, go to the YouTube and just subscribe to the channel. ASCII physics. That's probably the fastest way to get anything. Then it goes on the Facebook group and then finally it gets onto the canvas, but the canvas is the slowest. I'm already at almost 50% capacity on canvas and we're just in mid-October. So I'm going to have my canvas full of, I guess, screenshots and links um, by the time Christmas rolls around. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. But I'm going to keep pushing stuff off to Facebook, I'll tell you that, because there's unlimited storage there. Tomorrow, we'll wrap up on the 13th. We'll wrap up uh, packet one. We'll start packet two. I'll hand it out in class. Either come by the porch and get it uh, if you're virtual or just print it off. PSAT is Wednesday. And I don't know what virtual kids do on PSAT. Um, I guess you know, you've been, you've probably talked to your counselors about that, but only juniors, that's only for juniors. So if you're a senior, sophomore, I mean, I, if I was me, I wouldn't really come to school that day because I know in, in physics, what we're going to do on Wednesday is just probably work on the I'll give you a chance to work on the take home test, ask questions uh, for all you sophomores and seniors that are in class. Um, hang out, listen to some music. We're not going to work. We're not going to, I'm not going to introduce anything new on Wednesday. All right. Uh, but maybe that's, maybe you need that. Maybe you want to come in and just work on, give you time to dedicate to the take home test. And so the take home test, speaking of that, it's due um, Thursday night at, at midnight. So turn that, submit it, not a paper copy, submit, take a picture like we talked about, be careful, make sure it's, make sure it's, uh, you know, clear and it's good lighting. Take a picture and submit it by midnight on the 15th. And that's what else we got. So what else we got coming up uh, on Sunday, the 18th by 8 PM, at least by then, I mean, it might be, or it'd probably be before this, but at least by Sunday at 8 PM, There'll be a um, key and it's just going to be all the work we've done put together, all the work I've done on the uh, on the, the help sessions kind of all, you know, so you can refer to it. And then here's the new thing on here, this red, and there's going to be a uh, Zoom uh, help session a week from tonight. And that'll just cover last minute questions you have on the test or on putting together your packet. Uh, because when you come in on Tuesday, for those that are in class, uh, you'll just take a test. It'll be bell to bell, and you'll turn in your packet with notes. And I'll probably put together, a, in the next couple of days, I'll put together a cover sheet for that packet. And uh, you'll, you'll turn that in on the, 20, on the 20th, and then you'll take a test on the 20th. And so you'll have 58 minutes or 55 minutes, whatever it is, um, now the question is, what do we do with virtual students? And I'm not 100% sure yet. It's been suggested that I just, since most of you are listening to this are probably virtual, it's been suggested that I 
that that you do it through Zoom. So you're taking the test while I'm while I have your camera on, which is really weird to me. I would hate that myself, and I would hate to do it myself. Um, but I don't know what else to do. I mean, if if you're not comfortable coming to Stellar Novas or something, or the public library or whatever, I mean, I don't know what else we can do. So feel free on Facebook um, to discuss that idea, uh, how, how virtual kids want to handle uh, the test. Um, I'm willing to try anything as long as it's fair. If we do virtual, then you'll have, I guess I'll give you the 56 minutes and you got to make sure you're not distracted, you know, and it'll have to be, maybe we'll do it at two different times, give you two different, two different choices, but it's probably got to be sometime that day. It could be that afternoon. I'll just stick around. I'll, I'll be available or, um, maybe, uh, ooh, we can make, make it so you come into class if you want to on that Tuesday afternoon, since I'm in there on my own and we could definitely space you out. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable coming to school, that would give us a nice, you know, quiet environment. We could do it from like, you know, 2.30 to 3.30, whatever, we'll pick a time. Uh, and then if that won't work for you, then we could, um, then that evening, I could Zoom with those that didn't want to come in, you know, on their own. Okay, so I know limited like in the room to no more than 12 or something. So we're, eating, we're very well spaced out if, if that's what we end up doing. All right, so more about that later. The rest of this doesn't really matter. And then this is this week. Go check the, this, this will change. Go, go check uh, the canvas. Um, I'm probably already going to change this a little bit, but that tells you, that breaks it down specifically this week, what needs to be done before you either watch this video or come to class, what will happen in class, and then what, what your to-do list is. Okay, what else we got? Now, today's physics. So we started off in first hour uh, because, because of the, uh, Dr. Fernet gave a, a very good little talk about uh, the um, COVID-19 and about the SARS virus. And um, so that inspired me to do a little talking about um, the physics of it. And we had a student, the students looked up the mass and it was like, Atograms, a a, a can a, a yeah a SARS the the molecule that is the the SARS virus is uh, on the order of atograms, which is ten to the negative eighteenth uh, grams. So it's a millionth of a picogram, which is crazy small, uh, very low mass, which means it's going to get knocked around all over the place uh, by the water molecules in the air and by oxygen and nitrogen. And so we, were, we talked about a little about gravity and, and how it's going to fall to the ground eventually, but it may take it 10 minutes. It may take it 20 minutes while it's still moving around the room. This is important because if you're in a room where say they were singing like the choir, uh, would 10 minutes be enough for those particles to be bounced around and finally end up hitting the ground or the tables? Or would they still be floating around in the air 10 minutes later? So that's the question um, probably worth studying, obviously, uh, for your health. But the mask, in other words, like a kid would leave my class. I would have a conversation with the kid. And then they would leave my class. And then I would just take the mask off. Like I'm the only one in there, but I take the mask off. I go, wait, wait a minute. I'm taking the mask off. But there's probably still, if the kid happened to have COVID, there's probably still these SARS molecules are still floating around. So now when everybody leaves the room, I wait about five minutes before I take my mask off. I'm assuming that most of the particles at that point will have fallen to the ground or gotten down below my mouth anyway. All right, so then we talked about that in first hour, really not much second or third. Uh, we spent most of the time working on this. That's the back of 1.8. We really only got the graph on the left done. I think second hour did the other two, but we'll, we'll knock them all out tomorrow uh, we were out on the courtyard uh, doing a uh, doing our our pinwheels, and so this if this is the pathway between the main building and the science building, 
we ha I had everybody put their heels on the sidewalk and they were all lined up. So that's an east-west line. Uh, and then we did a pinwheel, which is it's like spokes of a wheel. It's easier said than done. You got to keep your spokes straight. So people would walk, and they would run actually. People on the outside would run. We had to run to keep that um, to keep that spoke straight, that line of students. So here you have 22, 23 kids in line, and they did a you know pretty good job. We we had to practice a little bit, um, but the idea was to talk about circular motion uh, compared to linear motion. So you're walking along, you know, meters per second, but you're also walking along radians per second because you're you're increasing your angle every second. And the question is, well, how many radi? We, we started here, we went 90 degrees, right? Well, how many radians is that? Well, all the way around, if we go in a complete circle, that's two pi radians, as you know. We went in a quarter circle, so two pi divided by four, that's pi over two. So this is pi, this is uh, pi over two, pi over two radians, radians. Okay, and then we timed ourselves. Now we got various times, uh, forget what it is over here. This is some data, I think this is from third hour. Looks like in third hour we got 17, see that 17 seconds. And I had a student uh, time that on her phone, we got 17 seconds. So this is from what, what we come up with in third hour. Um, and then first, second hour did the same, same idea. So here we have, uh, people all lined up, you know, 25 kids, 24 kids, all lined up, and we take off, I say, three, two, one, go, and then they try and keep their line all the way, and then we went over, so we ended up facing, so we were facing north to begin with, we are facing the band building, and then at the end, we were facing the main building, right, because we, we turned 90 degrees, well, then we did it again, this time, and the second time we did it, and I didn't, we didn't plot that, but Second time we did it, this, this person that was on the outside was now the center of the circle. And this person that was at the center, so now the second time we did it, it looked like, it's gonna get messy, but give me another color here. I'll just do yellow, I guess. So the second time we did it, it looked like this. This comes up, okay? So like that, the second time. And so we ended up all facing uh, once again, east-west. So we didn't plot that part. We just plotted the first part. But I wanted, to, I wanted them to experience, um, kind of get, try and get you into the physics. Because uh, just talking to the classes before we actually went outside, uh, there was nobody seemed to remember what omega was. And, and uh, you just, you know, you can't. I mean, you have to experience physics to even begin to understand it. Um, if, if I was asking what Omega was and you were staring at me blankly, it means you really didn't get anything we've done on circular motion in the last couple of weeks. So uh, then we talked about this bridge equation right here. And uh, so we first off, we figured out Omega though. Omega is delta theta over time. And so the delta theta was pi over two radians, 90 degrees. The time was 17 seconds. So we got omega in terms of pi. Now you always leave omega in terms of pi. You leave theta in terms of pi. You leave omega in terms of pi. You leave alpha, which is another, which stands for angular acceleration. You leave that in terms of pi. Anything involving rotational kinematics, you leave it in terms of pi uh, because that's the reference. When I say pi, I think, okay, you went a half a circle. You went, you know, uh, and then if I think of pi over two, I say, okay, you went, a quarter circle. So um, that's what you do. So our omega, I, did, I can't leave it as a fraction because then you violate that sig fig rule. And so when you divide that out, you get about 0.03 pi, leave it in terms of pi. And so my omega for the walk, when we did our first arc, uh, we did our first pinwheel, the omega was 0.03 pi radians per second, or you can just say inverse second. Well, then we got to convert that into meters per second, which is how fast we are actually moving. But notice that we, we picked three different students. So this student was only 15 feet away from the center. This student was 60 feet away. 
And we took a tape measure out there, at least first and second hour did. And this student was 90 feet away from the center. And so uh, just taking three particular students. So this student, they all walked the same omega. They all had the same angular velocity, radians per second. Um, but each one had a, had a different speed. This one at the 15 feet, remember the bridge equation uh, between circular world and linear world is V is equal to R omega or omega R either way. So V is equal to omega R. Um, and so we took the omega, which was the same for everybody, 0.03 pi, we multiplied by the different r's. So first I multiplied by 15 feet, then I multiplied by 60 feet, then I multiplied by 90 feet. And we got these three different speeds. Uh, V1, the student moving pretty slow, is 1.4 feet per second. And that's about one third what you normally walk. It's like baby steps. So because remember, about 1.4 meters per second is a normal walk. And it's about three feet in a meter. So that's about a third a normal speed you'd walk. 60 feet, uh, you could go ahead and say 60 times 0.03 pi, or you could just say, well, it's linear. Uh, so 60 is four times 15. And so four, then it's four times 1.4, and four times 1.4 is 5.6. And so this person here is walking at a fairly fast rate. Typical rate for a person walking is about four feet per second. So that's about 5.6 feet per second. So a little bit of a faster walk, but still walking. The person at 90 feet away was jogging. That's a slow jog, 8.4 feet per second. And all I did was I said, well, 90 is six times greater than 15, because 15 times six is 90. And so I took that speed Notice they're based linearly on the radius. So I took that speed, 1.4 times 6 gave me 8.4. I did do that right, right? 6 times, yeah. So 8.4 foot feet per second out here. Okay, now that's about as far as we got in third hour and first hour. Second hour went ahead and did these other graphs over here, but I'm not going to worry about the other two graphs for today. Well, these two graphs here. You could try them, go ahead and do them. I mean, they're not that hard. They're actually, don't make them too hard. Uh, you think about how your radius changed for any particular student with time and then how the angle changed with time. See what those two, what, what you're getting. My hint is think linear, okay? Even though we're going in an arc. And uh, okay, so the next thing we have is the homework. So the homework for tonight is to uh, try and work on take home test 1B, maybe just wait till nine o'clock tonight, or actually work on it some and get some questions, see so have some questions. I mean, it's much better that you tried it and then go, oh, I don't know how to do this, rather than just sit and wait for me to explain it without ever thinking about it yourself. You're just wasting, kind of wasting your time then. Like you're playing the game, um, you're trying to be a good student, but you're, it's like you want to be a good student, but you don't want to learn anything. That's kind of weird, but I know that's how it is for a lot of people. They want the A, but they don't, but that's kind of with me in high school a little bit sometimes. I wanted that A, um, uh, I don't know why, but I kind of wanted the A, but I didn't care really if I learned it or not, which is stupid because it killed me in college. It came back and haunted me. So I had to work twice as hard in college. So probably better that you try it uh, maybe this is my problem. I was afraid I was going to be wrong. So you, you will be wrong. Okay. Just expect yourself to be wrong. But then uh, that's how you learn. So then you can watch the me go over and go, oh, you know, silently to yourself sitting at home, go, well, that's how you should do so that nobody's embarrassed, that they might not know everything. Um, all right. So it's like when you play a video game, you, don't you screw up all the time? You just start over again, you respawn, right? Well, that's kind of like what we're doing here. Just screw up tons and tons. You'll have eventually a key posted on this stuff. And then when it comes time for the test, you're, you've made all those mistakes. Anyway, uh, finish the front of 1.8. And there, just to remind you, there's the front of 1.8. Now, not many people have asked a question about this, which I find interesting. Uh, but on Facebook is where you ask the questions. Now you're not gonna submit this through Canvas. You're just gonna turn it in uh, a week from tomorrow, a week from Tuesday. And then of course, most people are now turning all the late work, but it's, 
it is too late eventually. I mean, I think that the, the day you can no longer turn in anything for Packer One is not until like November 1st or something. You have all the way to the end of October, maybe it's even November, yeah, I think it is November 1st. Right, it's a Sunday before the election. So uh, that's the last day you can turn anything in from Packer One. You come back to me mid-November and try and I'll say, why? You had weeks and weeks to do it. So eventually there is a deadline. You cannot turn in anymore. So 90% of you have turned everything in. Um, so do that. You still can do it, but just don't keep putting it off. And then submitting, of course, late, what I'm saying. Okay, so that's it. Sorry this took so long. Um, tried to have you done by 20 minutes, didn't quite make it. All right. I'll wrap this up and put it on uh, the Facebook, uh, YouTube channel, then the Facebook, then Canvas.